Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I want to prove this very basic lemma we need for the next segment. Let us assume that the number n is greater than zero is an integer. And we are now computing pi of d for all d that divides n, okay? Pi is the Euler Torsion function. This is the lemma that I would like to prove. Summation of pi of d for all d that divides n is nothing but n. I'll give you an example first before going to the proof. Okay, let's see the example now. Uh, I wrote this little uh, Python function to explain to you what that, um, that was mentioned on the whiteboard. The, the thing that was mentioned on the whiteboard was we will do a summation, summation is sigma, of all integers d that uh, divide n and we are computing pi of d and if we climb this value is nothing but n. This is basically what was written on the whiteboard. Um, we assume that n is greater than zero. It's taking the number n, right? n is the input. And it goes through all the numbers from one through n. Uh, the reason I put n plus one is in Python, if you, if you put n plus one, the plus one is ignored uh, for the range. So we are looking for all numbers that divide uh, n, right? That means n percentage d equal to zero. If that is true, then we compute the pi of d, okay? And then we keep adding to the sum. And then at the end, we return the sum. So we get the summation that was shown here. This, this box, or this part of the uh, equation is computed. And we can see here, for example, some pi of 10 is 10, okay? We passed uh, 10 as input and we get out 10. We, we did some pi of 20 as the input, we get out 20 as output. As you can see here, sum of pi of d for all d that divides n is nothing but n. That's basically the climb of the lemma, which we will prove. Okay, let's go to the proof now. We consider the sequence of number fractions one by n, two by n, all the way until n by n. The core idea is to take each fraction and simplify it. We can always simplify a fraction by computing the GCD of the numerator and the denominator. That's one of the benefits of using GCD. Okay, so once you simplify any fraction, if you take a by b from this list, uh, will have the property that GCD of a, b, a comma b will be one, right? That's basically the way we will simplify. Furthermore, anything that you see in the denominator, if b is a denominator, b will divide n. That's also a basic property of um, numbers, okay? If you simplify a fraction, you get a new fraction a by b, this b must divide the n, and the a and the b must be relatively prime to each other. That's how we simplify fractions using GCD, okay? Now, we are going to make use of an interesting fact related to uh, pi of d in a moment. We are asking a basic question. How many fractions in the list of fractions after we simplify will have a given denominator d, okay? You, you don't know what is on the numerator, but you're asking how many times the d occurs in the, in the list of fractions that you have after you simplify it, how many times it occurs? Uh, to answer that question, I have uh, constructed an example so that you can get an idea and we can generalize it very easily from that. Consider the number n to be 10. So I wrote one by 10, two by 10, all the way to 10 by 10. And I simplify it, which becomes one by 10, one by five, three by 10, two by five, and all, all the way until one, of course. So what are the devices uh, of 10? The devices of 10 are one, two, five, and 10. And as you can see, all the denominators are just the, just the devices of 10. But now let's focus on say, for example, take D to be five, okay? Uh, how many fractions have five as the denominator? Okay, here is one, this is two, and this is three, and this is four. All right, so we got four fractions with the denominator five. What is pi of five? Pi of five is just four, Euler's torsion function. Okay, all right, you get the idea that um, if you take any fraction which has the denominator to be d, you can always find the pi of d numerators. Okay, that's basically it. So in other words, if we just sum the all, sum all the pi of d, uh, we get the n back, okay? That's the core idea, okay? Now I can also prove it a little bit more if you feel that this example mapping is not necessarily precise. Consider this now. Let's assume uh, d1 is one of the factors of n, okay? That means d1 must be in the sequence of fraction denominator after you simplify. So you have d1 here and you must have another factor d2 right? Which when you multiply d1 and d2, you should get uh, your n. So on the numerator, you can put d2. You can cancel d2 and d2, you get 1 by d1, right? Which is a fraction that must occur because d1 is relatively prime to 1. We know that for sure. Okay. What did we achieve so far? Uh, we found out that if you are given a divisor d1, we can find a numerator value 1, which is relatively prime to d1. Suppose let's assume 
D1 is also relatively prime to two. How can I now generate that? Since uh, we know how to generate this, right? All I have to do is just take D2, multiply it by two. I keep D1 here back as it is D1 and D2. So I can cancel D2, D2. So I get two by D1, which is another fraction you would like to have. So we can generate all fractions in such a way that the numerator and denominator are relatively prime to each other. Okay, which is basically what pi of d definition is. That, that's really nice. That means if we can partition this entire um, fraction into different groups, right, based on uh, the number d, okay, we know the d is a d that divides cn. How many times d occurs, we count, and then we move on to the next d. That means another divisor and so on. Okay, we add up, add all of the pi of d, we get n. This is the basic idea of this lemma. That's all. Thank you.